congratulations, first of all, on winning the 2021 Horowitz Prize. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. I am so honored. It's such an honor to have you speaking to us today. When you were developing the vaccines, did you imagine they would be used in such a crucial and historic situation for the first time? Obviously not. And uh, as you might know that I want to develop the messenger RNA for coding for therapeutic protein. And of course, you know, I, I, I became known now, but uh, I wish that there would be no pandemic and then we just would, uh, I would be just an unknown person and, and other scientists working in the, <laughs> in the laboratory. I, I thought that they would probably be used for an influenza pandemic because we have those not often, but often enough. And I, I knew that the platform had enormous potential for reacting quickly. I, I didn't expect a coronavirus pandemic like this. And what was the biggest challenge you know, in those years leading up to this moment? What was your biggest challenge in developing the mRNA vaccines? Yeah, you know, it, it, everything was a challenge. So we couldn't get grants. When we wrote papers, people really didn't care about it. When we went to meetings, people said, yeah, nice data and didn't really care. Uh, They all came back and said, yeah, RNA is too hard to work with, but we're not interested in RNA. Uh, So we kept getting brushed off, but we never gave up because we we knew it had enormous potential. All these years, I submitted a grant application for RNA, messenger RNA for therapy, and, uh, and I did not get the money, but it seemed that, you know, when we were doing the experiment, we could see that it is, uh, we are getting better and better results, and so that was the reason, and so even, you know, we didn't get uh, support from outside, but we were very enthusiastic. Absolutely. And we're so glad that you were. Why do you think people were skeptical? Was it just the difficulty of like the nature of RNA as a molecule, right? It being fragile, you never get it to evade the immune system, these sort of things. Yeah. So you know, in, in people's hands, the, the RNA was really inflammatory and it was hard to work with. So if, if you injected RNA into an animal uh, before we figured out how to make it non-inflammatory, the animals got sick. Um, but when you're making a vaccine, the, if the vaccine makes you sick, that doesn't do you much good. So it, you know, it, it was really that 2005 paper where we showed how to make it non-inflammatory. But by that point, people had been working with RNA. They knew it was difficult to work with. They knew it was inflammatory. They didn't you know, really notice our work. And uh, it, it just took a while for people to figure it out. One one reason was, of course, because in the 90s, it was, you know, the uh, Human Genome Project started and everything was about gene therapy. So as recently I wrote, uh, you know, the messenger RNA therapy was in the shadow of the gene therapy, you know, the DN. The, the people uh, were uh, rejecting our application because of concern about how labor. Now, today we can say that how good that we are not doing for long time, you know, making this uh, spike protein. We don't need that. We just need them one, two days, just enough for the immune system to recognize. So it is a benefit. What was the inspiration behind solving that inflammatory problem? I know, you know, you're substituting a specific tRNA out, right? What, what led you to that point of thinking that was the solution? Yeah, it, it was really years of work. So what, what, you know, Katie had been working on RNA for a few years before I got to Pat. And you know, she, she was getting nowhere because the animals died when she injected RNA into them. But when I started working with her, I, I noticed that the RNA was inflammatory. And th- that made us start to think about why is it inflammatory? What are the receptors? What are the mechanisms? We spent a few years figuring that out. And then we, we came up with a hypothesis that if we modified what the nucleosides, we could get rid of that inflammation. And when we tested it, it was correct. And, and that's how we made our observation. Um, you know, we, we knew it was inflammatory. We had to figure out how to make it non-inflammatory. 
and safe to deliver. I might mention, you know, that there are 100, 108 different modifications is there. And when we made only, we could uh, purchase 10 different ones and only five of them incorporated to the RNA. So we crossed our finger to make sure that whatever was important must be in that one out of the 180. Oh, wow. <laughs> 108 different modifications. And we, we expected that hope or we hoped for that, that which is critical to suppress immunogenicity will be present in those final five. <laughs> That's amazing. It's great when that works out. It's always nerve wracking when you do those experiments, right? Yeah. Maybe rewind a bit and tell me, I think there's a story about a photocopier somewhere of meeting at a photocopier I read. Um, how did you meet Dr. Kariko and how did you first work together? Yeah, so the, you know, the, it, it, it's a true story, and, and you know, younger researchers don't realize this because they don't know what a photocopier is. Um, but back then, the only way you could read a journal was to photocopy it. So we, we would, you know, it, it was a friendly fight. You know, wh whoever got there first got to use it first, and the other had to wait. But we started talking, and you know, we were looking for, for ways of making new vaccines, RNA had been tried before, uh, and Katie had the RNA, so we tried it and we started working together. That's amazing. So what you're saying is Zoom meetings might be great, but there are still reasons to work in person after all of this is over, right? Exactly. That, that and your coffee machines to hang out by and talk are, are still important in, in life in general. I would love to hear, what was your reaction when you first saw the amazing efficacy numbers from these experiments on the vaccines? You know, maybe maybe I am naive, maybe I don't have enough knowledge on that, but I kind of uh, expected that, you know, because we, really? before, we have already seen before, as I told you, to 2017, that every viral target when was used in different animal models, including uh, monkeys, it was always very protective. And of course, you know, we have seen from the phase one to trial, we could see the high level of uh, antibody, we could see, you know, immune, cellular immune response. So it, it, was, uh, it was kind of uh, obvious. By celebrating, I will eat the whole, you know, box of goobers chocolate, which was made in Philadelphia, <laughs> you know, it is a- Yes, of course. Hundred years ago in Philadelphia, they, uh, generated this goober chocolate and but usually I don't eat the whole box, which is like not that much of the <laughs> whole box. You know, it is a movie theater box. Yep. But that was, you know, that I ate the whole all of the <laughs> so that was it. And of course, you know, I uh, you know, I'm not celebrating really until uh, really that everybody will be safe and uh, this uh, pandemic will end and uh, then maybe I can more relax. But that is, that is very important. I was very nervous when, when this data was getting ready to come out. And, and that's because you know, my, my lab has been working on vaccines for a lot of years. We, we've probably developed 30 different vaccines. And what we saw with just about every one of them, when we tested them in animals, we usually had 100% efficacy the animals were always protected from infection. So we were really nervous because my fear was that in humans with COVID-19, what if we see 50% efficacy? The, the FDA, the WHO would accept that, but we're used to seeing 100%. So I was really nervous that you know, humans are always different than mice. That's just how things are. Um, so we mm -hmm. were very excited, or relieved, I should say, when we saw 95% efficacy. Yeah, that's, that's interesting, because I spoke to Dr. Kariko the other day. She was confident, apparently, so it's interesting that you had different perspectives on this. How did it feel for you when you first got the first vaccine, something that you worked years to create? What was that moment like? Yeah, so I, Katie and I got immunized together. Uh, it was exciting because, you know, we've, we spent 23 years working on RNA and the, the hope is always someday something you work on will go into people. And now it was going into us. 
So that that was a, a, a great feeling. It's such an emotional experience for us. It was for me. And I hear so many of my friends as well, you know, that moment of crying. And I think in New York, it's like, we like our events. It's like the biggest event, because you can't do anything else. The biggest event in town is getting your vaccine appointment, then going to do it. And people get dressed up and they, you know, they cry. It's, it's just, <laughs> yeah. I hear so many stories. Yeah, taking pictures. Do, do you, like, how does it make you feel when you see that reaction to people have to something that you worked on for so long. What's, what, how do you feel about that? So it was uh, very emotional and I got a lot of letters from people that who get and, you know, health care workers at the beginning that, uh, because they, they are the real heroes that who went to work, the doctors, the nurses, the cleaning, cleaning personnel that uh, went to the room where patients with this disease, with infectious this uh, corona were there and they were taking care of them and risking their own life. You know, that, uh, and take, going home and not knowing that and separated from their family, just to uh, make sure that they are not infected them. So for them, it was very important. And a lot of people who, you know, couldn't see their parents because everybody tried to be isolated and, and that, you know, happiness that they could get the vaccine and they could, it was, you know, and they want to express to somebody and they emailed me or sent me cards. And so it was very nice. And, and of course, you know, I, I know that so many people, as I just mentioned, so many people worked on it. And uh, before those people who came before us and our colleagues and, and later not mentioning, not just the scientists at BioNTech or Moderna, but um, all of the uh, technical expertise, you know, that who scaled up this production and, and figure out how to run the clinical trial, how to run, you know, the uh, shipping, the sample, distributing everything. So it is just a superb job from everybody who, who participated. And I am just happy that uh, I am one of those persons that contributed to the success. Are you worried about variants at the moment in terms of efficacy? And is there a like sort of need to, you know, roll this out and solve all of these logistical scientific problems well on a worldwide scale right now? Because there are variants out there and so many people have, you know, the virus at the moment. Yeah, so, you know, th 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 that's exactly the problem is that until we vaccinate the entire world, variants are going to keep appearing. So far, all of the variants, the, the RNA vaccines, work very well against. The fear is that someday variants are going to start appearing that the vaccines don't work against. Now, because of the speed of RNA vaccines, we can make a new one. We can make a booster very quickly. But, you know, I, I, I really hate having to chase after this virus for the next five years, keep making new variant vaccines. So the, the most important thing is to vaccinate the world. The, the other thing is that what we've been doing since last uh, spring, we've been working on a pan-coronavirus vaccine. There have been three coronavirus epidemics in the past 20 years. You have to assume there's going to be more. So we can do what we did this time, and that's work quickly and make a vaccine but that still shuts the world down for a year and a half. So what we started is making a vaccine that would work against any coronavirus that, that crosses over from bats or pangolins or civets or any other animal, camels, uh, so that the vaccine is ready to go, or even better, is given to people now that'll prevent the next COVID-19 or COVID-22 or 25 or whenever it appears so that we can prevent it before it happens. I think that's what's critical because, you know, responding quickly is good, but it's, you know, look at the world. We're, you know, we made a vaccine in 10 months, but the world has been shut down for a year and a half. Um, if we can avoid that, I think that's critical. And I'd like to end with a couple of, I guess, personal questions um, about your career. What inspired you to become a scientist in the first place? And when you started your career, could you ever imagine working on such a historic problem in 2021? Yeah, so, you know, I, I got interested in basic science when I was in college. And I, I actually 
did a master's degree to, to get more exposure to basic science as, as part of my bachelor's degree. Uh, after that, I did an MD PhD because I knew I was interested in research. I, I, when I did my fellowship, so after residency training, I, I went to Tony Fauci's lab, and, and that's back when HIV was just being discovered. So, you know, I, I started this out in a brand new epidemic, uh, trying to understand what that epidemic was, trying to develop the immunology and ultimately develop vaccines that we're still working on. So I, I started out in, in a brand new uh, epidemic. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I'm not surprised that the end of my career is going to be a, a part of a big pandemic as well. I think something that we see is that many of the previous Nobel Prize winners are immigrants, you know, and I think we think it's really important in science. You know, why, why do you think immigrants and a, a diversity of ideas are so important for you know, good science and good scientific ideas? Um, you know, the people are, when myself in 1985, I uh, flew to, with my two and a half years old daughter and husband to the U.S., we had no cell phone, there were no credit card, and there was no, nobody to ask help because we didn't know anybody in the United States. When an immigrant uh, uh, person is coming, you have to believe so much that you, you will come over all of the problems. You have to believe so much in yourself to to come here and uh, with uh, no money and <laughs> nothing and and you have to believe that you can do it and also that you are um, coming up with uh, always solutions. So I'm so used to in Hungary that okay we don't have something okay that um, uh, we don't have a chemicals I, I I can make it how to make look it up make and always that kind of uh, solving instantly the situation and not like oh back ordered mm, it will come later no no that we we can do it and this and always you have to adopt that uh, situation is changing and that's what makes you uh, viable here. And one last question I have um, before we can wrap this up. Um, so, you know, you've, I've read that you said you've fulfilled your dream in science because you've created something that helps a lot of people, right? So what now, what's next for you? I, keep, I think that the scientists is similar to, to you know, those uh, rock band players, you know, they are playing, there are always somebody listening until they drop that on the stage and that's it. You know, you don't see that uh, rock player you know, going to retirement because they enjoy, enjoy making music. I enjoy making, uh, you know, science. <laughs> yeah, you can't retire from something you love. Impossible, yeah. right? <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you so much for your time and congratulations on winning the 2021 Horowitz Prize. You know, we uh, we cannot thank you enough for your contributions to science and the world at the moment. So, you know, really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you very much for, you know, I remember reading in once in Hungary about this prize and reading the, you know, all of these prestigious people, that all of this knowledge and the, to think about that I, I will be in their company. I mean, I am so honored and, and very, very happy. Thank you very much.